Good afternoon and welcome to uh, Near Westside Partners weekly webinar on April 21st. Um, this nice snowy April day. Um, we're excited that you're here with us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about the Choice Neighborhood Initiative Transformation Plan, something that has been uh, over three years in the works um, and we're really excited to present on that today. Um, and so with that, we will get this going. All right. So welcome and happy spring. I know it's not really spring like today, but tomorrow looks a little better. So uh, keep up, up the good spirits um, and uh, hopefully this is the last snow of the year here today. Um, so, um, so some Near West Side Partners updates, really exciting things happening um, over the past week and over the next few weeks. Um, so this past weekend, uh, we had the Near West Side Neighborhood Cleanup. Uh, over 200 volunteers were out across the Near West Side over, uh, over the weekend on Saturday, cleaning up um, with over 100 bags of garbage filled. Um, and so really appreciative of everybody's hard work that went into this, um, especially um, our outreach and safety manager, Bobby McQuay, and then uh, Bill over at UMCS did a great job coordinating this effort um, and are excited to see the Near West Side looking uh, much cleaner um, and just encouraging everyone to get out there and pick up the litter um, over the next few weeks too and really keep the Near West Side looking clean. So thank you for all of you that participated in that. Um, an update from City of Milwaukee. It is the uh, Project Clean and Green time um, where um, the city will pick up um, some additional items um, curbside with your regular trash pickup. Um, and so um, there's a whole list of uh, materials online for you to look and really a good time to kind of uh, clean up and clean out. Um, so in the near west side, the the two weeks that the uh, Project Clean and Green will be going on is May 3rd through 7th, and then also the 17th through the 21st, um, just depending on when your specific trash day is. Um, so be sure to check the website, uh, milwaukee.glove slash clean and green, uh, to confirm your specific date and also the materials that they will be picking up curbside. Um, a great time for some spring cleaning. Um, just another weekly reminder, uh, get your COVID-19 vaccine. Um, all, uh, all Wisconsin residents uh, 16 years and older are eligible for the vaccine at this time. Um, additionally, all across the United States, anyone 16 and older is eligible for their vaccine at this time. So um, encourage your neighbors, but also encourage family and friends across the country um, to get their vaccine. Um, if you're looking for a location, you um, can go to milwaukee.gov slash COVID vax uh, for more information on the vaccine itself, um, as well as places to get vaccinated. Uh, we do have a couple of vaccine clinics in the near west side popping up over the next uh, week or so. Um, so Sunday, April 25th, this coming Sunday from 11 to 1 at the Tripoli Shrine um, right there on Wisconsin. Uh, registration is required, so email Lindsay if you're interested in that. Uh, her email address is associate at nearwestsidepartners.org. 
Um, and then Friday, April 30th, so a week from this Friday, at the Hmong American Friendship Association on Valit. Um, this is a walk-in clinic, um, so no appointment required, can just go in um, and get your vaccine that way. And then um, in four, three or four weeks when you need your second, they'll be right there again. So um, great opportunities um, for near West Side residents to take advantage of if you have not gotten your vaccine yet. And then the Hunger Task Force Mobile Market. Um, really excited that um, this market uh, keeps coming through with regular frequency throughout the Near West Side. Um, and so next Tuesday, April 27th, from 11 to 12.30, the market will be at Penfield, uh, Penfield Children's Center um, in their new parking lots uh, there at 27th and Kilbourne. Um, the big fish mural right in that parking lot is where um, the mobile market will be. Um, and this is open to anyone. Um, so stop by, check out what they have, um, fresh fruits and veggies, so lots of good produce, as well as uh, meats, milk, cheese, yogurt, and more. Um, so a great place to stop in. Um, and it does, the market accepts debit cards, credit cards, and uh, EBT, just no cash. So keep that in mind um, if you're looking to check out the markets. Um, it'll be in a great location um, with really easy access. So uh, check that out next week. All right, so that takes us to our content for today, uh, talking about the Choice Neighborhood Initiative planning grants. Um, so this is a grant that Near West Side Partners alongside Marquette University were awarded back in uh, 2018, back in September of 2018, so almost three years ago. Um, it is a housing and urban development uh, federal grant um, that we are very uh, fortunate to be working with HUD on. Um, and with this planning grant, there are two main uh, components. Um, so the first one that we have presented on a lot during these weekly webinars, um, and hopefully you've heard a lot about over the, the past few months, um, are our action activities. So those are those six physical community improvement projects, the, the murals, the neighborhood markers, the uh, facade grants, the pocket parks, um, and the traffic calming along 27th. Um, so that's one component um, that we've spent a lot of time talking about. But then the second part is the transformation plan. Um, and so this is a strategic document that is focused on housing people and neighborhood. Um, so housing, really looking at improving the uh, physical structure of housing conditions uh, with a specific focus in on our College Court residents over at uh, 34th and Highland, um, but also looking at housing conditions across the neighborhood. Then we have people, and so this focuses in on health, education, and employment, um, and really working with our schools, working with our healthcare providers, um, but also working to provide employment opportunities and training for those that are interested. Um, and then finally, neighborhood. This focuses in on both safety and commercial corridor development. Um, so improving the safety of the neighborhood for um, all that live, learn, work, and play in the area, but also improving the retail assets, supporting small businesses and entrepreneurship, um, and really increasing the amenities that people that live in the near west side would like to see in the neighborhood. Um, so this is a big strategic plan, a big document. Uh, it's like 200 pages long that we have had a lot of people uh, working on to create. Um, and it is a living document. Um, and so what's, what we mean by that is that uh, the strategies, metrics, uh, goals that are all put forth um, are all open to changing as we collect more data, as we get additional feedback, as we find out that one thing doesn't work, we're able to pivot to something else. Um, and so this is really going to be the guiding document that is adapted and changed um, for, for the Near West Side um, over the next few years um, to really uh, look at transforming uh, housing and assets and the amenities for all near West Side residents. Um, so we're really excited to talk a little bit more about this today. 
Um, so just a little bit about uh, how this plan came together. Um, so the organizational structure for the planning process. Um, we had an advisory council that is made up of um, stakeholders of the area as well as residents um, and really kind of guided our planning principles um, to push things forward um, throughout the planning process. Um, we also developed a resident council that has members from College Court as well as from our other near west side neighbor neighborhoods and these are really the go-to residents who spent the most time with this uh, transformation plan, making suggestions, talking to their neighbors about what they wanted to see, um, and really uh, helping us uh, make sure that the resident voice was captured throughout this document. Um, then we have our principal investigators, Patrick Canelli of the Center for Peacemaking at Marquette, and then Keith Stanley, uh, Executive Director at Near West Side Partners. And so at the end of the day, these two are responsible for making sure we uh, hit all the, the metrics and push this grant forward. Um, but really, a lot of the work was done by the Near West Side Partners uh, working teams. And so um, with that, we have the housing neighborhood and people teams, as well as our data team. Um, and so these teams um, are made up of residents, as well as um, a lot of the organizations and businesses in the Near West Side sent representatives to different teams to really help uh, shape these uh, strategies. Um, so for example, with housing, um, Axe Housing, um, as well as uh, Housing Resource Inc., both of which have you know, done webinars and talked with us in the past couple of weeks about uh, housing, on that housing team, helping us to develop strategies that really um, work in their experience. And so we're able to lean on their expertise, um, as well as ideas for the future of things that they would like to see implemented. Um, and so, really a variety of uh, organizations that contributed, working with the city of Milwaukee and different entities within that structure to really support each of the individual working teams. Um, and really just pulling on the expertise of people working on the ground and in the field. Um, but when it comes down to it, residents are the ones leading the charge on all of these goals and strategies. Um, and so um, they're really the base of uh, all of the work that has been done um, and will be a large part of the implementation of the goals and strategies as we move those forward. Um, and so we do have a listing of some of the cooperating organizations over here. I'm not going to run through all of them, but um, just trying to, to recognize that there are a lot of people uh, hundreds of people that spent hundreds of hours really working on uh, this document, um, and we're really excited about um, what has come together as a result of that. So talking about housing, um, at, since this is a, a HUD grant um, and they are focused on housing, um, housing is the main is the main goal here. Um, and so while we are focused on public housing residents at college courts, um, there are also strategies um, to really support uh, all, all residents of the near west side. Um, and so uh, the goals are to develop public housing opportunities with appropriate density and accessibility that support a diverse resident population. Um, and so really making sure that the housing stock reflects uh, the needs of residents. Um, you know, so having a good mix of uh, one bedrooms as well as three and four bedrooms to really support uh, families, having a, a nice uh, variety of um, rental options as well as home ownership options. Um, and so that leads us to providing a high quality affordable market rate rental and home ownership opportunities that are attractive to residents and employees. Um, so looking at housing opportunities, not only for our college court residents, but also for um, our, our other residents that are living in the area or um, employees that currently work in the area and are interested in living in the near west side. Um, developing a and centralized access to housing resources to retain and support renters and homeowners. Um, and so really connecting residents or potential 
uh, residents with the resources they need to be successful um, in the neighborhood, uh, whether that is renting or um, through home ownership. Um, and so um, part of this looks like uh, live, work, play um, and supporting people, uh, getting financial resources as well as connecting with uh, home ownership resources, um, as well as our good neighbor program, uh, working with landlords to ensure that the quality of their housing um, is um, up to a high quality um, and recognizing those landlords that go above and beyond. Um, and then our final housing goal, provide healthy residential living for all residents. Um, and so really we know that uh, housing and health are very intricately related. And so we want to be able to uh, recognize that link and ensure that people have homes that support their health, you know, free from uh, molds and uh, lead um, and really make sure that people can uh, find home as a, a respite from some of the other stress that might be going on in their lives um, and in that lead to healthier lives in general. Um, so really these housing goals um, support all residents in the near west side as well as all potential residents, uh, whether they're renters or homeowners um, or you know transitioning from one to the next. Um, and we want to be able to support all of um, all people in the near west side. Um, so we've already begun kind of working on some of the strategies proposed in the transformation plan. Um, and so part of that is uh, with live work play and the rollout of the um, the the grants for uh, home ownership repair um, for uh, some of the exterior repairs and kind of reworking that program to support uh, people that are already living in the near west side. Um, so that's just one way this plan, uh, this transformation plan is already being enacted. Um, and hopefully over the next few months, in the next few years, you'll also see some of the other um, goals and changes coming um, related to housing. Um, we are working closely with the housing authority um, to really make sure that our college courts and public housing residents um, the quality of their housing uh, is high um, and that we have options for people living in the neighborhood um, to stay in the neighborhood. So um, really excited about housing and the um, additional uh, strategies and goals that'll be uh, rolled out uh, over, over time. Uh, up next, we have neighborhood. Um, so again, neighborhood is focused on both safety and commercial corridor. Um, so we have strategies related to both. Um, and so the first goal is to provide a safe environment for all to live, work, and play. Um, and so working with our uh, community prosecution unit um, to really ensure the safety of all residents and businesses, um, working, you know, as new businesses come in um, to do SEPTED walkthroughs and ensure that the setup of a store, um, it makes the most sense for um, the safety of those working there as well as any customers coming in um, and really working together collabor collaboratively um, to make the Near West Side a safe place for all. The second goal is to create an environment that attracts a broad mix of quality commercial and retail enterprises that meet community needs. Um, so with this really looking to increase the retail amenities in the neighborhood um, and also working with people, uh, residents that have ideas about entrepreneurship, working with them to develop those ideas um, and, you know, start their own side business or eventually open up their own storefronts. Um, we have a lot of uh, commercial spaces available um, and really working with people to program and open those spaces, um, especially with local entrepreneurs that have ideas um, and just need a little support getting there. Um, and so then the third goal is to promote a strong neighborhood brand and build a sense of community. Um, and so this is really working with our neighborhood associations and getting people to uh, work together uh, in a variety of ways. So for example, the uh, neighborhood cleanup this past weekend is one of the strategies under this particular goal. 
uh, hosting annual cleanups and working with uh, all of our resident groups as well as individual organizations to uh, keep the near west side clean but also come together to do something together as as one neighborhood um, and so excited to see other program programming events uh, that might come out of this specific goal. Uh, fourth goal is to develop safe and efficient transportation access. Um, this is not only important for the safety side, but also for the commercial side, um, so that people can move to stores uh, and different retail options and amenities safely and efficiently. And uh, so one of the things that falls under this is the traffic calming that has come along 27th Street. Um, so the first phase of that was working with uh, City of Milwaukee, specifically uh, DPW to do the painting and the plastic bollards that are along 27th Street, um, which has seen a, a decrease uh, in uh, reckless driving along that uh, particular corridor. Um, and the second phase of that is tied to our action activities where uh, concrete planters are going to be in those spaces, in those corners where the, the paint currently is um, to really just assist with the continued traffic calming, uh, but also a, an aesthetic upgrade um, to get some flowers planted and get some um, color uh, of those flowers on a, a corridor that is really the the heart of the near west side um, and so we're really excited to see that come together um, as well as some of the other strategies that are underneath this specific goal um, increasing bike safety as well as pedestrian safety um, and just making sure that all who are in the neighborhood can move around safely um, as safely as possible um, and then finally, our fifth goal, uh, promote healthy living. Uh, so this is really tied to uh, fresh food access in the neighborhood. Um, so uh, working with uh, like our partners at Hunger Task Force and making sure that that mobile market is coming in on a regular basis, uh, working with our partners uh, that are institutions in the neighborhood uh, like Penfield uh, to host those mobile markets um, and make sure that uh, people are having produce accessibly um, and at an affordable price. Um, this also means working with some of our convenience store owners to uh, reconfigure their store to over, uh, offer more produce uh, and maybe work on some supply chain issues in order to offer more produce so that uh, people can access healthy food in the neighborhood. Um, this also includes uh, promoting the uh, Hank Aaron State Trail right there on the south side of the neighborhood, um, on the south side of the near west side, um, and getting people excited that there's a bike and walking trail uh, just south of the near west side that's uh, wide and open and uh, can take you a lot of places, um, and really encouraging physical activity as well. And last but certainly not least it, um, are our people goals. Um, again, so this is tied to health, education, and employment. Um, and so these three things are really, uh, we have a lot of organizations in the Near West Side that are focused on these three areas. And so this is a great place for Near West Side partners to collaborate with those who are uh, working on the ground in these areas. Um, to really uh, see what support they need um, and what ideas they have for the future. Um, so the first goal is to create a culture of health by linking to high quality health and wellness programs. Um, and so this is really at the base of the creation of the health working team um, that just launched. Um, and we're very excited about the work that that team is going to be doing, um, not only around uh, COVID-19, but also um, how racial equity is tied to health um, and just working with all of our partners in the area. Um, the Near West Side has over 100 nonprofits, um, many of them focused on health and wellness, and so really working to find places to collaborate. Um, and, you know, a lot of people, um, 
or a lot of residents are seeking health care outside of the near west side, um, even though there's really high quality options right in the neighborhood. Um, and so really working with residents to figure out why people aren't using the locations closer, um, working on transportation issues, um, and just making sure that everybody has access to high quality health care um, and that it's affordable and accessible. Uh, the second goal is to provide access to employment, quality education, and learning opportunities for healthy living. Um, so while this primarily focuses in on our youth education, um, there are also uh, lifelong learning education uh, strategies as well. Um, so for the youth side, um, one of the things that we've done in the development of this transformation plan is bring together um, the 12 schools um, across the nearest side. We had representatives from each of the schools um, come together uh, in, a, in a Zoom platform similar to this and uh, discuss um, what are some of the things that you're doing at your campus um, that you think others might uh, want to learn from or what are some of the strategies you're looking to implement in the future? Has somebody else tried this? Um, and really just having that collaborative mix. Um, you know, in the near west side, we have public, private, and charter schools um, and schools that don't usually talk together, but um, it was really awesome to bring uh, bring all of these groups together, um, and we're excited for uh, some of the um, strategies that are in place, as well as some of the future collaborative projects um, cross cross school that we might be able to implement with a, a little bit of help from some other partners and a little bit of luck. Um, but very excited about that, um, but also excited about some of our long term. Uh, education plans as well. So um, working to get uh, cooking classes, working with some of our very talented chefs in the neighborhood, uh, like Lisa Kay uh, from Lisa Kay Catering, um, and uh, hosting cooking classes, uh, similar to what we did with the Made in the Near West Side series back in the fall, but uh, hopefully one day cooking in person um, and really um, showing people the connection between healthy food um, and how easy it can be to cook healthy meals um, and giving people those tools. Um, so there's a lot of great, uh, a great strategies in that area. Um, and we're really excited to see, see what comes together. Um, and so with that, um, that's really kind of a, the big overview of uh, the transformation plan. Um, like I said earlier, it's a, it's a, big 200 page document. So, you know, we don't want to spend um, too much time going through every little detail, every little metric and strategy, um, but it will be on uh, the Near West Side Partners uh, website very soon, uh, hopefully, and uh, people will be able to check it out that way. Um, you know, over the next few months, we'll really be rolling that out more um, and answering questions as they come up, uh, making small changes and edits. Uh, like I said, it is a living document, um, and we're excited to uh, keep, keep it updated and keep updating our ideas um, and strategies and initiatives um, in order to make the, the near west side a great place for, for all to live, learn, work, and play. Um, but with that, um, we have some of, uh, some of the people that really contributed to uh, the development of this transformation plan. Um, talking a little bit about that, um, as well as a thank you to HUD. So College Court over on 34th and Highland is the hub of what, what even makes it possible for us to participate in the Choice Neighborhood Initiative. It starts with the HUD property, College Court. It goes out into the neighborhood, impacting the neighborhood from a housing standpoint. And then people um, is another element that we not only just want to do bricks and mortar, but we want to make certain that we're investing in people, which parallels a lot of the activities that the Near West Side Partner has done as well. The neighborhood will become safer. People will enjoy it more and more. Children will be able to come out and play on the city streets just because of the visualization that Near West Side has in the community. It already has shown to lend to 
feelings of safety and more people on each block are beginning to know each other instead of just their next door neighbor. But we planted flowers and more people picking up paper, more people cutting the grass on time, keeping the alley clean and calling the police when things not right in the neighborhood. We could not be anywhere without the support of our residents. They lead the passion and the commitment that we have to make sure we're going in the right direction. The Choice Neighborhood Initiative has been such a tremendous opportunity for the near west side. We've been able to really improve the housing conditions, improve the commercial corridors, and our neighbors and residents are more engaged than ever. We couldn't have done this without HUD, and we want to just say thank you, HUD, for giving us this opportunity. I thank HUD and the Near West Side Project for taking our little area of the map into consideration and making things better for us. Thank you, HUD. It's a pleasure that uh, you all are willing to uh, give us the opportunity to, to develop and make progress and, and, and increase our living arrangements and so on. Thanks, Thanks HUD. HUD. I want to thank HUD, the Housing and Urban Development, for the Choice Neighborhood Initiative grant. And their money will be well, wisely invested uh, with an appreciable return. A return on the bricks and mortar, a return on the neighborhood, return on the investment into the people. There's no place, no better place in America than you can be than they'll invest in their West Side partner. With the partnerships that we have here, those dollars will go and be well used and be multiplied time after time after time after time for many generations to come. All right. Um, so let's, uh, I guess that's it for today. It doesn't look like we have any uh, questions coming in. Um, we're really excited about this transformation plan. I know, you know, there's not going to be many people read it uh, cover to cover, and that's okay. Um, but we're excited um, to put this out there and let people know what um, our goals and strategies are uh, in the coming years, and um, also an opportunity to see where else we can collaborate um, to really just uh, continue the positive momentum in the near west side. Um, so thank you all for joining us today. Um, enjoy the rest of your, your snowy afternoon. It's really starting to come down out there. Um, and we'll, we'll see you next week um, for our, our monthly PCOR uh, webinar uh, next Wednesday at 12 o'clock. So have a great day.